Professor Kinderman and Dr. Ray, that's what I want to talk about here. The moral, uh, the moral parameters that we were talking about that are set by taboos, that you can't do this, you can't do that, and that, uh, that isn't set in law, that isn't set in the Constitution, but it guides society, it guides certain limits. Does that benefit the powerful and only uh, certain people at the cost of individuals? Yeah, so I, I completely agree, agree with Professor Kinderman. And thinking through um, who it benefits is oftentimes what we need to highlight. So certain individuals are reprimanded. They are labeled as being deviant. And then it becomes a form of social control. So taboos are used as a form of social control to reprimand one, one group of people and kind of hold them in place, hold them in check, to make sure that they conform, to help them to abide by traditional forms of cultural behavior. But on the other end of the spectrum, individuals who are privileged by power, and oftentimes that deals with being at the top of a caste system or at the top of, of a socioeconomic status hierarchy, or it might be related to gender or race. And part of what we see is these individuals are not held accountable. And what's interesting is who is actually implementing the social control. Of course, we might have police, we might have military, but currently we also have technology, whether that be our mobile phones, whether that be surveillance footage, that hold people accountable for certain types of behaviors that other people are not held accountable for. And it leads to a very conformist culture where on the other hand, you have individuals who are oftentimes free to not abide by the taboos, partly because they are actually making the rules and the laws about what the taboos are and the taboos that...